All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Josh. Thanks for tuning in into today's episode on advanced simulation techniques in metal forming. Uh, today's topic is on thermomechanical simulation with an application to hot stamping. I think this is going to be really interesting um, because we yeah, extend our knowledge in terms of thermomechanically coupled simulation, which are pretty useful, especially whenever we deal with um, um, bulk, but also sheet metal forming. So we start with sheet metal forming today. Um, and today, actually, it's the first time ever I have a guest here in my studio. Um, his name is Manish. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, and he actually worked on this topic. So we'll do like a yeah conversation based um, dialogue um, on this topic. So because like he's the expert in this, he will guide us through he's not an expert he would say but i think he can still help us out so manish how are you doing yeah i'm good so it's your first time i hear right exactly you, you know, yeah you must be nervous it's always the first time you're really nervous but anyways okay guys let's get started and um manish i think it's uh your call now yeah uh so first hello everybody so yeah it's me manish as of Joshua already told. <laughs> and yeah, so these are the contents which we go through today. Uh, the first one, I would just go through the setup, how we can set up all the thermomechanical simulations and, in the Macus. And we will include boring theory, guys. Yeah, that's very that's, important. That's always <laughs> there. <laughs> it is new. And uh, so next, uh, we'll go through an example, like how hot stamping simulations are like set up. Uh, like how I tried uh, in Abacus and then I will obviously go through the results how we have analyzed it and then I will try if there is any alternative approach is there I would like to point it out so so first first of all like why and when we would use this thermomechanical couple simulation so first of all uh, if there is a situation where we include thermals we wanted to include some thermal induced effects then definitely thermomechanical coupling simulations are important. I mean, and uh, it's not always the th thermal effect is included, but the thermal effect can also influence our stresses and strains or like our me mechanical behavior of our body. So especially we see that in hot forming simulations or hot forming situations, sorry. So then we can say uh, thermomechanical coupled simulations are useful. So yeah, that's all the things that I've written here. And uh, so first, uh, I would like to tell how the basic mathematical background behind uh, this uh, thermomechanical simulations, uh, because we here we do have two types of implementations. One is exact and one is approximate, according to the Abacus. The exact one, uh, which I'm showing here, is the uh, default method. I mean, we, we see here the, the equation completely changes. Here we no longer has uh, this, uh, this stress displacement uh, change, uh, sorry, the displacement change, but we also have uh, the incremental temperature change. And uh, so, and we include it with a matrix called the Jacobian matrix. It's a quite complex matrix. Now we just don't have uh, the shape functions, but we do have a Jacobian matrix. And uh, yeah. It doesn't look too complicated to me. It only has four entries, so. Yeah, I mean, four entries, but yeah. So due to this, I mean, we have a problem because uh, as it is a Jacobian matrix, so solving cannot usually takes place with uh, symmetric matrix storage. So that's one thing we need to take care, think of. Uh, unsymmetric matrix storage is the one which generally we need to prefer or, or the abacus would generally go to the default because it's using this type of simulations. So so for me, it was a, was a little fast. So okay. just to, to get it right, I think... Um, if I understand it right, so you have the terms of the Jacobian that mm -hmm. determine um, only the displacement and only the temperature yes. changes, but um, we're talking about a thermomechanical coupled simulation. So exactly. I think this is these terms are actually, is it right that these terms yeah. determine um, the interaction between so exactly. that, um, that you have to solve... Um, um, the mechanical and the thermal problem at the same time because you mm. have coupling terms. Is that, exactly. is that correct? Yes. Okay, so because I think back in the days, um, what was happening is actually that you um, used a more staggered approach, meaning that people first, because this approach of a thermomechanical coupled okay. um, simulation, is as you've presented here is way more um yeah ch numerically challenging so i think the staggered approach that was used in the past 
would mean that you would only solve the displacements, mm -hmm. then only solve the thermal simulation, see if, let's say, due to thermal expansion, your body um, went out of equi equilibrium, so you went back and solved only the, dis the displacement. So this is why it's called a staggered approach. Like you had displacement, then thermal simulation, then displacement, then okay. thermal simulation. And I think um, this is actually not physically yeah. as it is not correct because you mean it's in, like stacking, stacking. Yeah, really no, like, yeah, okay. exactly. Because like in reality, um, those things interact and influence each other all the time. So these are exactly. these, the, the coupling terms are very important here yeah. to understand that um, you need if you solve for the thermomechanical equilibrium, right? This is what you solve for. Yeah. Um, the things interact and uh, affect each other. I just wanted to maybe point this out a little yeah. bit um, more and, cool. and talk a little bit about the history, right? It's, yeah, uh, you do know a lot of history, I guess, about this, but it's cool. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, yeah, the problem is like uh, finding those two, um, these two are really complex. So in our mathematical equation, so that's uh, always challenging, I would say. So I could not present much more mathematical background, how we can calculate those. No, it... Nobody's interested in this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, and yeah, according to the Bacchus manual, they provide that, they, they say that, so here the the convergence is also quite different. I mean, uh, the method, according to them, is like quadratic convergence. I mean, uh, I couldn't c quite actually get this. Like, uh, so maybe you could help if you understand anything because the, uh, the convergence here is completely different from the not what we generally have at displacement uh, uh, simulations or normal stress displacement simulations. So that is what I've just pointed out here if anyone is interested. So yeah, they can look into it. But the approximate uh, implementation here, what I mean is like uh, these situations are like uh, quite rare or I would say generally it's it's not, we we need to use it on a separate basis because here as we what we have told these two, these two matrices uh, equations, they, when they have weak coupling between them, so that means like uh, suppose one example is the disc brake problem where you know when you always when the pads always when you cook the brake the pads would get into contact with the disc and uh, there will be thermal uh, heat generated but it would not affect the mechanical properties of that at the instant I mean like when compared to the hot stamping or something uh, it is on a long term basis and also we and we could also say that there is a weak coupling between the both so so is it rather the aspect of the of the time so you mentioned that for example in this disc brake problem uh, it is it is taking just some time to to build up the temperature and therefore potentially affect the exactly the mechanical, or is it that because you also mentioned it um, the weak coupling. So you say, yeah, that I in, mean, like, for uh, example, in a in a ceramic, there is um, the thermal expansion is very low, and mm -hmm. in this type of problem, let's stay with the yeah. disc brake problem, yeah. you don't have a lot of deformation mm -hmm. um, at all, which could be potentially affected by the heat being generated um, during the braking. So what would you say is more important to look uh, at the time or the coupling? I, I, so. I, I, I meant actually the coupling is more important, but, mm -hmm. but I actually meant what I wanted to say is like this time thing. So, I mean, when the brake is fresh, I mean, like we have a new car or something, when we are going to a longer, longer life cycles, then maybe they can have an effect on that. So, okay. yeah, that's what I meant. Like for like after a few life cycles or something, the brake can get a considerable amount of wear and that time the heat can affect the strength of that pad, a lot, I mean, the wheel a lot. So that's what I meant. But the coupling is what exactly is most important. Okay, you especially know. looking at yep. our later yep. application yep. in forming technology, I yep. say that this weak coupling, yep. so coming back to what I've um, talked about before, if you don't have the strong coupling here, mm -hmm. it basically boils down exactly. to that you can potentially consider this separately yeah. um, and therefore actually um, if, if we think about what I just talked about the staggered approach that the exactly. people used in the, in the past so if you solve the um, mechanical problem for the displacements then you solve the thermal problem for your um, temperature distribution and then you would go back to and check if your body is still in a mechanical equilibrium mm -hmm. in a weak coupled problem you would see that in the best case it is still in a mechanical equilibrium even though yeah. it has 
like more um, thermal energy in it now like due to wear or whatever due to heating whatever so i think this is really interesting to see and think about because um i think one of the aspects is that if you choose to go for the approximate implementation it's much faster yeah but yeah. you lose some of the let's say the physical quality of your solution yeah. right because you go in with some assumptions which is usually the way to speed up your simulation time but uh, it comes at a price and the price is you lose the accuracy but i think this break problem is a nice way to to show that there are certain applications yep. where it's totally fine to use the approximate implementation and to actually save time right exactly. so if you especially as you've said if you do some long-term analysis yeah. and which would take a lot a lot of simulation time even if you do it only mechanically yeah. doing it fully thermal thermomechanically coupled would take probably way too long so i think these it is always important what type of solver do you use for what type of problem i'd say in um in hot forming in general uh, we won't use it because there the interaction between yeah. the there is exactly a strong, strong interaction between yeah. the temperature and the stasis and everything so. yeah so the guys um like i think most of our viewers are fairly familiar with the basics so you know that the flow stress is heavily or can be heavily affected um by the apparent temperature in a body so if you go from let's say um, room temperature to 800 degrees it can according to your material model it can drop significantly so you have exactly. a very strong coupling yeah and i guess even more so also in uh, sheet metal form but it's good to know about these things and where you can save a lot of time exactly so that's yeah. that's really cool